Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have got an absolutely fantastic guest. I'm absolutely stoked talking to them. This is the amazing Elijah. Elijah is a mental health professional, activist, student, just all things all things good and wonderful mental health and positive mental health. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that as well. <laughs> We've met because you are an amazing mediator here at the Science Gallery in Melbourne, um, which is where we are shooting uh, this, because you are interested in science, art, mental health, all of that. And you have also last year done a fantastic installation about mental health. Would you mind letting all of our viewers know what it was? Because I think it's just brilliant. Of course, yes. So uh, as part of the Durban City Council's uh, Let's Take Over, uh, I produced an artwork that was based around mental health intake forms, specifically around the K-10 and how hard it can be for certain groups of people to access mental health in, in the current system. Mm. I, you know what, I actually finished my, uh, I finished the form just before we started this and I failed pretty early. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's re it, you've got a health bar, it's yeah. really easy to fail, and but if you do get to the end, it yeah. does give you the option to send a letter to an MP, to a bunch of MPs, Fantastic. about mental health funding. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll absolutely link that down below if you would like to play, because I think it's absolutely wonderful. And also, the set and the uh, the installation itself that you had was just so wonderful and so like this kind of dreary medical reception office. Absolutely. Was just 70s in a way. It really was, <laughs> and that's exactly what I was going for when I made the installation. Was like, how can I play a crazy receptionist in just the world's most drab and insane? reception office. I love it. It looks like an absolutely amazing piece. I'm so glad to have you here and I would like to ask you a couple of questions regarding self-care in the wellness industry. So I guess the first one to start off with is what does self-care mean to you? Oh, I love this question because it's so tricky because <laughs> self-care for me always feels like a practice that stops you from reaching burnout, a practice that stops you reaching your limit, a, a practice that we use in our everyday lives to improve our quality of life. And I think that it is an incredibly important part of taking care of ourselves, but it is also a highly capitalistic and heavily exploited industry that's trying to get people you know, under the guise of taking care of yourself to a space where you're just paying money for shit you don't need. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love the concept of some some sort of industry or something that helps you to not burn out. That's kind of the first time that I've had a response almost of like that because usually when people will go to the more capitalistic consumerist. Yeah, parts. absolutely. It also addresses the need that like there are actually things that we can do that don't feed into this kind of consumerism hole and actually do help us from not burning out. Yeah, absolutely, which is why I consider practices like going to the dentist, one that we all hate, um, <laughs> like going to see your mental health care professionals, yeah. um, seeing your doctor regularly, doing your taxes, any anything that keeps your life moving forward yeah. and stops you from being in unfortunate positions that life can sometimes put you in, I consider self-care. But I also find that some forms of mindfulness and meditation can be very useful for me. Right. Like, while a bath isn't going to fix your large mental health concern, I find them really relaxing and helpful. <laughs> I, I have very strict morning and night rituals that I like to do. Um, just really to keep me in the routine and the swing of being a person in the world. Mm, mm. So I guess this, this idea, this concept of self-care that we have doesn't necessarily need to be for someone that is able to go and buy these sheet masks or all these things. Self-care is just living well, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's the, the issue that we really run into with the self-care and the wellness industry is that it's become buy sheet mask feel good yeah. rather than a, a series of practices that you keep up and you yeah. use as rituals or routines yeah. basically to just keep, keep you upright and keep you going on. In regards to the version of self-care that we've just been speaking yeah. about there, of something that is wholly taking care of the self, that sounds like it's relatively good for our mental health. Yeah, and I think that self-care practices that involve like solely the self mm -hmm. and are used to, to, to keep yourself going and to take care of yourself as yourself are very beneficial to your mental health. What I will say, however, mm. is that the self-care industry yeah. and wellness influencers and bundled up in that beauty influencers yeah. um, have a really horrible way of 
you are horrible and bad at being a person by byproduct. And that is so detrimental to people's mental health. Mm. Because if you're constantly being bombarded with billboards, wow. YouTube videos, TikToks that say you're bad byproduct, mm -hmm. eventually you're going to break down in byproduct and you're yeah. not gonna feel any better about it. Yeah. Self-care while is a an amazing practice that keeps you upright, keeps you moving, takes care of the self and what yeah. you really need. It's not a replacement for good mental health care. Yeah. It's not a replacement for product. Products are not a stand-in for, for taking care of yourself properly. Mm -hmm. And I think when we're talking about self-care, like there's no one-size-fits-all approach to self-care. Yes, there are so many different ways that people are approaching self-care. Some of them are doing a stupid face mask because maybe that makes you feel better for an afternoon, but some yeah. is taking a nap if you're just exhausted. All of it kind of works around to make sure that you don't get this level of burnout or this level of yeah. exhaustion associated with it. Which I think is what behind the scenes of what these influencers are doing. Like they, mm. it's an exhausting practice. Absolutely. You watch YouTubers or TikTokers mm. that, that are wellness influencers and you just see that one person but what you don't realise is they have teams and teams yeah. of people behind them yeah. to make sure that they look as hot as possible. Their marketing is on point. Their routines are on point. Yeah. It's such a crazy thing to try and think that we can keep up with them mm -hmm. because we can't. Because mm -hmm. we are just one person mm -hmm. trying to exist in the world <laughs> and not 40 people yeah. presenting a thin white woman yeah. as the pinnacle of health. Do you think someone who starts off as a micro-influencer or like starts off Maybe not with the goal of becoming like a wellness influencer. What do you think their initial motivation is? I mean, I, I can see how it all goes into like quite money driven. There is a level of fame and there's a level of money associated mm. with all of these things. But do you think that's the goal from the outset? I think that's a really interesting question. As someone who's not a micro influencer, yeah. like it's, it's a little bit tricky to answer. But I, what I think is that people probably set out with the goal to get to that point. It would be hard to me imagine a world where micro-influencers or people who want to become them don't see the money, the fame, I guess the power behind people who have 8 million followers on Instagram. I can't think of a good reason why you would want to besides what is the perceived end goal. Yes. Because the self-care influencer wellness industry is kind of a bit of a monolith. You are trying to fit yourself in this very small box yes. of what it means to be a wellness influencer. Yeah. And I feel like while there probably are some very true and real people trying to make change yes. in that field, I feel like they just get swallowed by yes. it. Yes. I guess with also the rise of social media, I know we got this is kind of going on a bit of a tangent, but if we think about the rise of social media and the way that we've seen different bodies portrayed in the media for a very long time, mm. in the last 20 years or so, has been the huge start of like the BOPO movement. It was something that we absolutely never saw. And I wonder if there's gonna be a similar thing that comes with the wellness industry, that there is almost a change of, you know, we don't have to buy everything that Gwyneth Paltrow makes. <laughs> we could just go to the dentist and that's self, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And that's self-care and we can still document that, but it's in less of a performative way and less of a consumerist mm. money way. Thing. Way. Yeah, I, and I think that that is a change that very much might happen in the next like 10, 20 years. Yeah. We can we can certainly cross our fingers <laughs> for that. Um, I do just want to say briefly on the body positivity yes. movement. It was a really interesting movement from the start because it was moving towards like embracing different bodies as as being you know good and okay and sometimes even desirable. Mm. And then I feel like in the last like few years and especially on Instagram, really yes. really springs out to me the idea that the body positivity kind of moved moved into the, the fuckable movement. All bodies are good because they're all sexually attractive. Yes. Rather than all bodies are good because all bodies are good. Yeah. All bodies are good because they are our because, bodies and they sustain us. Yes, exactly. The counter movement to that, the body neutrality movement, yes. is mm -hmm. is really, really important because mm -hmm. that's talking about well we don't actually have to love our bodies. We just need to know that they are our homes mm. and we need to take care of them. Self-care and self-care practices, especially in the way that the industry views them, are not a replacement for proper mental health support. Because one in four Australians um, 
have lived experience mm. of a mental illness and that can range from very mild depression to extreme psychosis. Yeah. As someone with lived, with lived experience of mental illness, I can assure you that it is not enough. You need to talk to someone, you need to see someone, whether that is a psychologist, a counsellor, a psychiatrist, whatever you need mm. for your treatment needs is going to help you more if there is a larger scale event than just I'm a bit tired from work. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we tell people if they're struggling to go to therapy, mm. we do encourage them to talk about their GPs because that's what saves lives. Mm -hmm. You know, self-care, as amazing a practice it is, will not save lives. Yeah. Therapy and good mental health support does. Mm -hmm. And with so many suicides every year, and especially over the course of the last few years, yeah. it is really important that we encourage the people in our communities and our friends and colleagues that it is important to seek help when you need it, yeah. and that help needs to be mental health support and not watching wellness influences on YouTube. <laughs> How much of the self in self-care do we need? And and can we shift that to a communal version of, of self-care? Absolutely. And how important is that? And like, for me, how much better do I feel when I get to go and see a group of friends, you know, yeah. during the day? Sure, I'll feel a bit like emotionally kind of exhausted afterwards, but there is that feeling of kind of fullness. Really makes me think of Rat Palace. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Oh. It was an experiment done on a group of rats yeah. with heroin. Um, in which they would put one rat with a with a dripper full of water and one with a dripper of heroin. Yeah. Um, the rat would always go for the heroin until wow. they put them in Rat Palace, which was a community of many many rats, uh, lots of things to do, lots of things to play with, lots of spaces to be with a community of rats, and they never picked the heroin. Wow. This is a study on rats, yeah. but I think it really speaks to the kind of community support and mental health support needed by people who do suffer from addictions. I think it's really important to know that sometimes self-care is awesome, but sometimes you need community care. As well, yeah. yeah. And I feel like we just didn't have that over the course of the last two years. Yeah. Like, you know, you can have a Zoom call, but I find with Zoom calls, I just feel how far away they are Yeah. in that, yeah. Little, in that little box. I think there's that, that thing as well of of the Zoom fatigue that a lot of people suffer yeah. from as well. That was just like, I can't do another Wednesday night, games nights, yeah. over Zoom, because <laughs> I'm exhausted by it. It doesn't substitute for the real thing. But I but I understand that one size doesn't fit all in these Yeah, situations. absolutely. I really agree with that comment that communal care is, is, you know, should be balanced in that, as well as, you know, looking after the self. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And look, if rats can do it, fuck, why can't we? we can do right? it. <laughs> so with all things considered, who would you say your favourite person on Instagram is? Okay, so my favourite person on Instagram, I actually found her on YouTube first. Mm -hmm. uh, her name is Maddie Dreisbeck. Okay. Um, and she is kind of adjacent to, like, the wellness kind of space. Yeah. But what she does that I think the wellness space completely misses is the fact that she is really messy. She is a really, really messy person that will happily vlog about genuinely how she is doing. Genuinely the things that she recommends that you do. And genuinely talk about her life. Mm. And I just find her to be so deeply honest mm. and respectable as mm. like a micro-influencer. Mm. So go follow her, she's lovely. Go follow her. So then, who would you say your least favorite person on Instagram is? I mean, God, there are a lot of them. <laughs> I think I think the person that I'm really hating on at the moment is Emily Fletcher, who is like a meditation kind of teacher, but she's also like a 45 year old white woman. Yeah. Um, and her form of meditation is she gets you to repeat like an asinine word over and over and over oh, and over God. again. And I just find it to be such like a mockery of like such a complicated space and such yeah. a complicated series of East Asian traditions. Yes. And it, it's yeah. really grinding my gears at the moment. She's not linked in the description. No, no, she's not linked in the description. She's not linked in the description. She's, not linked to the description she's got like eight million Instagram followers, and I'm oh, like, oh, she's doing just fine. She's then. doing fine. <laughs> so. You would seem to consider yourself a bit of a philosopher of sorts. What are your views on hedonism? I find hedonism to be a very complicated space. But I will, <laughs> in, in short, I will say that hedonism is a, is a wonderful and fun thing to do. It's a wonderful thing to be engaged in. But I do not think it should be the basis of our ethical system. 
or on basis for our systems of government or any other kind of things. But I do recommend going out and having fun though, I think that's important. It's a bit sketchy on the, the actual ethicalness and practicalities of using heat in like larger structures of life. Yes. And it probably shouldn't be a basis for self-care. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> do you think I could sue Gwyneth Paltrow for ruining my life up to this point. Ooh, that's a tricky one. Um, I'm going to say that you probably could try, but I would imagine that many people have probably already tried to sue Gwyneth Paltrow because holy shit, does she say some shit. I have strong feelings about Goop. Um, I would imagine that she has a team of very, very powerful lawyers. Yes. And unless there was some kind of like large community response, I think it would be difficult, but we should because of the coffee enema alone. <laughs> you mentioned at the very start of the mm -hmm. video that your installation, at the end of it, when you win, you know, gives you the option to send a letter to a whole bunch of MPs. Yep. So if we can send something in a way that helps alert our MPs about this kind of really destructive nature of this whole industry that's kind of breeding throughout our society, what should we put? in a letter to our MPs? You should put in a letter to your MPs that they need to start regulating the industry because the industry is just kind of growing and growing and growing and growing and as it's doing that it's getting harder and harder to fight it from like a from like a personal community perspective because it's becoming quite the monolith. I think that the thing that our that our governments can do and the consumer advisory board can do is regulate the industry. Yeah. So if you want to talk to your MPs or you want to talk to your congressman or wherever or not you're viewing this video, you type up a letter and say that you need the beauty industry and the wellness industry to have stricter regulations on it and while you're there also ask for more mental health care funding because yeah. I know that we only get 10 sessions on of a mental health care plan here in Australia yeah. um, and we got 20 over the pandemic and that should stay that should stay because 10 sessions is not enough for a large scale issue and therapy is expensive trust me we need more funding in the sector and we need the industry to be regulated so that it is not harming people in the way that it does. Yeah. Put those in your letter. So in final, do you believe that I have the chance of becoming the most famous wellness influencer by 5pm next Saturday? 5pm next Saturday. It's a week away. It's a week away, okay. When we're filming this video. I, I'm, I, I don't want to crush your dreams, Catherine. <laughs> But I don't think you've got the stocks. I'm sorry. I think there are so many people saturating the market of trying to be the world's most influential wellness influencer. And I feel like while you are a delightful person that I've enjoyed chatting with, you may not hit the stars. Also, I don't have a whole team behind you. You also don't have a whole team behind you, and also you're far too nice. <laughs> Far too reasonable and far too real. You heard it here first. It's not gonna happen. That's probably a good thing, though. To you know. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think for everyone's sake, but especially yours. My sake. Yeah, I think, I think probably not. I don't think I'm ready to go onto a global platform. Um, you know, in a week's time. Probably <laughs> not. But you know, if you do, you know, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, that's the next video. Next video. Well, thank you so much, Elijah, for coming and chatting. No worries. I had a wonderful time. It's been, yeah, it's been an absolute. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for imparting your wisdom. Um, of course, everything that Elijah spoke about will be in those, those descriptions uh, down below. All of those people you recommend, your amazing uh, game, as well as the installation behind that yeah. game as well. Thank you so much for, for coming and hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, no worries at all. Had a great time. Awesome. I love it. Well, that's all from us. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.